Okay, so I just thought to set a bit of context really, I mean, I thought we might talk a little bit about um, what artist development is, what we perceive as artist development. Um, I think it means different things to different people and I think within the music industry, I think depending on what your background is and where, where you're coming from in the industry, um, I think it does mean different things. So, Sarah, if I can start with you, what would you, how would you describe artist development? Uh, well, it's changing very radically. You know, a conversation I was just having prior to this in the canteen about the speed of change in the music industry. I got into it in 1985, which seems an awful long time ago. And I remember CDs had just come in and thinking that that was a revolutionary thing, which obviously was. And then the rate of change, the next sort of big seismic thing, probably happened several years later and then several years later. Whereas the last certainly post Franz Ferdinand for me in the last five years, the speed of change, I mean particularly here I, I think the advent of downloading has changed everything because it, it's made um, it's made things very much more aimed at sort of a certain type of demographic, certain type of people buying singles, which traditionally singles have driven um, the pop charts and then ended up with um, albums as a sort of postscript to that, that was a sort of albums came from the mid-60s and obviously 70s were the heyday. But in, back to your question, for development purposes, now it's getting very hard. You know, the, in terms of the new bands coming through, there's no real, everything's changing so quickly that labels, there's a real stasis now with labels, and we were talking about it earlier, that, you know, no one really wants to invest, no one knows what the future holds, everyone's worried about, you know, whether things like um, subscription services are going to take are going to become the dominant thing in a couple of years, then Labour's going to invest a lot less in that. So, I mean, I think the starting point, so I've digressed a bit, but the starting point with development of bands always has to be the music. Yeah. I think that hasn't changed in 25 years and never will change. I think that's your first thing. Then once you've, developed, you've got a musical platform that you feel the band uh, know what they're doing, that they, they get confidence, then you start to build all those other things and a list of questions there. I mean, you know, by the time you're launching them, that's a long way down the road. Yeah, you know, yeah. the starting point definitely is music. But I mean, vaccines is probably a, quite a good example because they're one of the few guitar bands that seem to have A, been given a chance and B, making any impact at the moment. And, you know, with them, we got some, James found them last February, um, had two songs. We had eight songs by the summer, just decided to play it to people. We'd done a deal by September. We had our record out in March, I think. You know, you can still do it quite quickly if you have enough songs. You know, we, Zane Lowe, played a song and went mad for it from a demo and played it, I think, 23 times in something like six weeks. And that changed everything. For, so it still can happen, but that seems to be happening less and less. And I think bands, you know, or musicians or if you're managers or whatever end of the industry and I think you have to think of getting a, a batch of great songs and again that's sort of going full circle to what I started off saying singles seem to be more important certainly than they were in the 80s or 90s because it's all about getting people excited about a moment and then everything else comes afterwards but to make money particularly as an alternative to a rock band you need to have a batch of songs and you need to you know, but will albums still be coming out in five years' time? Well, that's a good point, and it brings, you know, a very, very good question to bring on to our, our label boss well, sitting up, next yeah. to me. Um, you know, from your perspective, same sort of question, what do you perceive as being artist development? How is it different from, you know, the label point of view to, say, the, the management point of view? Um, He's a manager as well. Yeah, oh. I mean, I manage a band as well. I, I just think that... Um, Bands developing, you you either need some kind of guidance on on where you're going and how you're going to get there. Um, there's there's a lot of bands out there who just get together, play a couple of songs, and think that's it. And I think that's kind of very rare these days. There are a couple of bands that that we are currently working with that we found in a rehearsal room. Have got a look. They've got some songs. They've got the swagger. You meet them. You you think they're real stars um, but it's becoming harder and harder for record companies to do anything with a band like that unless there's something moving 
And that's got nothing to do with us. I think that's got to do with the media and what they're looking for. You know, if we present a band to media and there's not very much going on, and when I mean not very much going on, I mean they haven't played a lot of gigs, there aren't great stats to look at online, um, etc., etc. They haven't put any singles out. They tend to turn around to us and say, what's going on? As we should explain this to everyone, I mean, when you go in and have meetings with George, who runs Radio 1, he sits there with a computer, and two or three years ago, he used to sit there in the meeting while he played the music, and he'd have MySpace up. Now he has your Facebook up. Yeah. And that is a major part of the conversation, not, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, you go and play yeah. the control of Radio 1 music and listen yeah. to music. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not slagging him off, but that's just the way it's gone. You know, yeah. it is much more about the culture people are creating yeah. around them and that because very little is sticking. Yeah. You know, Mona's a good example. That band just released a record this week. They did huge deals last year. Released a record when at 39 last week. It's 108 after two weeks because Radio 1 don't like it. Yeah. And you know, that's so how the next moment. Has that not always been the case though? Is that not, you know, especially in the last 15, 20 years, if you don't get that support, I mean, I know we're flitting around here a bit, people. But we'll yeah, but I tell you what's a big difference is the <coughs> labels are investing more in less. Yeah. So 15 years ago, the reason that band, let's say the moment of that era, wouldn't have got something would be because there was so much competition. Mm. Now labels tend, you know, there's a handful of those deals. I mean, you know, for Maximo Park, at the period you did your deal, you probably knew a lot of contemporaries doing deals. You know, lots of bands, whatever size, were getting deals. You, you know, I was in this. So I'm doing all the talking, I'll shut up in a minute. But um, I was in a studio the other day in London that used to be sort of one of the big indie studios. And I was looking at the board and I said to the guy who runs the studio, how many of those are paid for sessions? And he had 28 days marked up and he said two. And there were two that had come out of my office and they were the only two days out of 28. Stuff, I'm the only one who's paying here. Well, you know, <laughs> luckily we've got labels that will pay for stuff, but yeah. you know, 26 days were being paid for by, by us and every day was full. Mm -hmm. And that's a massive change. You know, tw yeah. 10 years ago, every day would have been paid for by a label. Yeah. 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 So from your point of view, I mean, Paul, I was just going to bring you on the subject of artist development. I was going to change the, the, the uh, obviously from an artist's perspective. Um, are there things that you've learnt along the way with, with your journey with Maximo Park from, say, when you were playing your first few gigs at the Head of Steam or the, or the Clooney to being signed? You know, is there anything that you might do differently that you can shed some light on in terms of <coughs> where you developed yourselves? Or um, I, probably, I wouldn't change anything because, you know, I see myself as quite lucky to be in this position. And mm -hmm. As Sun was saying, you know, I don't really know how people would get a, a record deal these days and get that initial push. Um, you know, we, we didn't have any money to go on tour with the you know the record company would give us money to get the to get the van to pay the the tour manager to pay the sound engineer, and you know those initial uh, leg ups, if you like. Um, you know, I don't really know how many of those there are these days. But um, to go back to artist development, um, I come from the the, the point of view that. You know the artists should be, you know, pushing themselves. You know the it's, you know we call them artists, so it should be an art form. You should be um, questioning yourself and pushing yourself on a daily basis and trying to learn more about music. And um, you know I see I see a lot of bands where maybe I'm an egomaniac where I think you know if if they had if they did this or that they could be a good, you know, a really good band and instead, you know, they've got potential. And so I think um, maybe people looked at Maximo Park and, and said the same thing, but um, we also, I think, you know, we signed to a, an independent label in Warp who just said, we really like what you're doing and we'd like you to do it, you know, don't, we, we'll pay for the recordings, don't really, don't change anything. Um, and of course, they, you know, they pay for the, the photo shoots where you look a bit, a bit nice than you, you're supposed to, um, and all of that sort of thing. Um, but I remember we, we were approached by a number of different labels after we put we put out our own <coughs> single, I should say. Mm. We put out um, a seven inch with two of our best songs on, um, and uh, press companies came up to us and, and said, we, you know, we'll work for free on the off chance that you might use us in the future. And um, so we had a little bit of a push behind very small push behind that little 
seven inch that we put out ourselves. And then record companies started asking us if we wanted to, to work with them. And in those early stages, um, some of the bigger record companies wanted to manipulate us more than we would, we would, we would like. Uh, and I think, you know, other people might realize that they need a bit of extra help. Some, sometimes you don't, but um, we, were, we were really unhappy about that. And that's why we signed to Warp in the end, because they just said, we, we'd release whatever you wanted to release, whether they were lying to us because they knew that we had commercial potential at that point in time is another matter as well. But, um, you know, from my point of view, there are, you know, the a &R side of things where people are, are giving you ad advice um, was never really a road that I wanted to go down. Um, you know, and I think everybody's different. And on this panel today, you'll hear different, different views to that side of things. But, you know, for me, I wanted to do what I wanted to do in collaboration with the other four people in our band. And that was it, really. We were, we were very driven individuals. And, you know, it could have been complete folly, but things, things went our way. So from my point of view, artist development should come from the artist. And you should have, you know, a, a collection of songs that you think would form the basis of a really great debut album before you start playing them to people because if you start playing people a couple of good songs and the rest of them aren't very good it's it's it becomes a struggle when the spotlight's on you know i think um talking about our band specifically in the northeast you know there weren't people knocking on your door there weren't people saying there's a hot new band in town um, you know, let's and, and you know, hundreds of people didn't flock to the head of Sting. You know, we played there plenty of time, just building things up bit by bit. Um, and I think that worked in our favour. You know, I, I still, I still stand by all of the all of the songs in our debut album. Um, whatever it is, five or six years later, um, and that's because nobody nobody had much influence on 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 that side of things. But I, you know, I mean, I think it's crucial to have management and record companies who know what to do with the music you know that's that's the side yeah. of things that yeah. i you know i have no real business acumen you know I, I, I do whatever i think is right you know and try and go with work with the right people and but the people who work with us understand where we come from yeah. you know it's not like we're getting pushed into places that we don't want to go you know every decision is made yeah. as a group